doing, Gregor? You well? I'm doing well. Good to see you again, Nick. How are you doing? Yeah, great. So uh, nice to see Personas here with, uh, well, I guess, what, what are you guys showing? Yeah, we're showing um, 5.4 for Studio One. That came out just yesterday. It's um, an update that's focused mainly on performance and stability. For instance, what we now have, not just for our own plugins, but for any other plugin, is a so-called plugin nap. What that means is that if you're adding a plugin, it's not currently in use, meaning the GUI isn't open, yeah. and there's no signal present at the input, and what happens is, you see this moon icon here. Uh, the plugin is essentially stopped, uh, like a pause, so it doesn't eat up any of your resources. No CPU, neat. So this is really great for people who have like large sessions, but not every track is playing at once, and they're gonna see some considerable performance improvements due to this. Excellent. What we, yeah, what we also have is a much better plugin manager. So if you go to the plugin manager, you're able to show and hide your plugins just like before, but you also have a statistics tab now that shows you when was the last time you actually used the plugin. Very helpful, so you can start to cull exactly. all of that stuff you don't need, right? I mean, I have like 800 plugins by now and I really need to tidy up a little bit. So it's great that I see which of these am I even using at a glance. Also, you can see average load times and save times if you inserted them since you updated to 5.4. And um, you also get a version list which shows you the current plugin version that you have installed. So if you have an issue with a crashing plugin, which happens a lot, then you can just double check if you have the correct version installed and then update if necessary. Oh, nice. Right. So the other thing we have is a much better autosave. So before, what would happen is while you're editing, sometimes the autosave would jump in the foreground. It would be a little bit intrusive and uh, it would take away focus from what you're currently doing. Now the autosave is pretty much unnoticeable, happening pretty much entirely in the background. And so you can shorten down the autosave interval to something like 30 seconds, save every 30 seconds, and you wouldn't notice a thing. So to do that, you just go to the general preferences, and then you go to locations, and here you can just set that to 30 seconds, enable autosave every 30 seconds or so, and yeah. But what, does that, what does that do for the undo buffer and uh, sort of versions and whatnot? Um, the undo buffer is not going to be affected, but as soon as you reopen the song, then the undo list is basically cleared. Okay, then the other thing that's pretty great is a call preview. I think especially uh, session musicians would really enjoy that one. So for example, on this song where we have the chord track, you'll see this big chord display that we now have, which is nicely scalable. We have a lot of scalable windows now too. And this, as you're playing back, shows you the current chord as well as the upcoming chord with this progress bar up here. Oh, that's nice. Can you, do this, can you do the same for the count as well? Because I always find that like one, two, three, four, the bar count is always handy to have large. Oh, that's, that's actually a good point. I'm not quite sure if that's possible as well, but that's definitely something I'll, I'll add to the list. Now that I'm here, please don't push me away. So yeah, we already got some great feedback for that from some session musicians, and hopefully more users are going to enjoy that as well. And of course, the big one, we are now natively compatible with Apple Silicon, like the oh, M1 excellent. Max, and you're gonna see some considerable performance improvements if you also have plugins which are natively compatible. Nice one. Yeah, and aside from that, we're showing hardware. I mean, like the DC coupled audio interfaces, all the Studio C interfaces except the 24C, the quantum interfaces, they are DC coupled, so that's great for modular heads, which are, of course, present here at Superboot. So you've got a bit of that going on here, right? That's exactly right. And then I can use that, for instance, together with the Atom SQ to open up the release on my envelope. Is that running on this rack here? Yeah, absolutely. I believe you. Yeah, <laughs> now you have to prove. So this is like a perfect marriage almost between the digital and the analog sound. You get the digital convenience, but you still get to harness the analog richness of the sound. Excellent. What are you using to drive the, uh, the CV and get in that? I'm that using cool? reactor blocks over here. So you can use a variety of solutions, actually. You could even use Ableton CV tools, running Ableton on the side. You could uh, use expert sleepers, silent way. In this case, I'm using reactor blocks. And essentially, it's just one pitch yeah. 
CV, one gate CV, and one CV that I'm controlling with the mod wheel. We're just going to the envelope release in my case. Any plans to do any of your own tools internally then, I guess? Sorry, say again? Plans to do any of your own CV tools internally? with? Studio Maybe one? at some point in the future. I know, I know you can't tell me, I just had to ask. <laughs> So that, this, is a, this is available now, right? Yeah, 5.4 available since yesterday. A free download for any version 5 user. Thank you very much, right. Gregor. Thank you so much, Nick. Bye-bye.